Hello, and welcome to the Wage Slave Warriors podcast. My name is Jack, and I'm a wage slave, for lack of a better term. However, for the past decade, I've moonlighted as a videographer, mostly making music videos for various metal bands in the UK, among some other things. In that time, I've met a large pool of creative talent, musicians, content creators, and the odd entrepreneur who hustle hard outside the norms of working a day job, and becoming almost famous. I've decided to create this channel to chat to some of these unsung individuals, to pick their brains about what drives them, and to go over their current and previous achievements. At the time of making this episode, the UK is in a nationwide lockdown, giving many of us here either some time to reflect on things, or to branch out into other endeavors. For this first episode, I'm talking to Ian King, best known as the drummer for the heavy hardcore bands Pint Glass, No Second Chance, and at one point Cold Hard Truth. Ian is also one of those talents that has mastered multiple instruments, and he really just does not stop. And it's worth mentioning that he's been a friend of mine for a very long time, so expect plenty of banter and quite hilarious stories of tours that he's done. This convo should also serve as a window into a genre of music that may seem niche, but has an international market and plenty of fanfare to boot. Enjoy. Yo, Wagwan. Yo, how you doing? You right? Yes, brother. I'm. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing all right, mate. I'm doing all right. Ah, uh, good to um, see you, man. Just... Give me a second. So I'm. Uh... Aha. There you go. Let's crank that bastard up, and uh, yeah, we should be good to go. Boom. How you been, buddy? How's the family and everything? Yeah, family's good, man. Family's good. Um, Philip's. Uh... <laughs> Philip makes me laugh, man. I like, literally, he. Uh, you take. You know how it is, you know. You take one eye off of him, and uh, he's on the other side of the room, even for uh, a split second. As like, he started, as he started crawling real fast, then yeah, he's fucking rapid, man. Like he's uh, <laughs> for, some, for some reason he likes my phone, like obviously because it's all uh, big and black, as you can you see there. <laughs> <laughs> as he as he got into the stage where he's actually sort of uh, playing with apps and touching stuff, because I swear kids are picking up tablets and shit fast. Uh, man. Not at all. I don't. I don't let him do that. Neither does Carolina. No, we're not. We're not letting him do any of that. If you're going to yeah. play with something, you're going to play with something real. Not until. Uh, <laughs> not until. Old, yeah. Not until he's old enough to uh, start fucking around with apps and shit. And uh, obviously, you know, we want to be careful about what he does. No, yeah, that's not because, that's true. Say true. Say not, not, be, not because we don't want to. Not because we want to wrap him up in cotton wool or anything like that. But just simply because. You know, it's there's so much there's so much beauty out there, and there's so much shit to look at. Why the fuck do you want to like be like mm, the whole time? You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell that's that to the parents are stuck at home with their older kids and trying to fucking entertain them. Yeah, well, see, that's a diff- that's a different story. You know, even even before COVID, even before lockdown, you know, like everywhere I see it, everywhere I look, there's just kids like under the age of ten just trotting around like. <laughs> it's depressing man it really is it's depressing you know is, like, when man. i was when i was their age i was fucking i was riding my bike and playing football and setting fire to things and painting <laughs> shit, you know? that's, that's what kids should be doing yeah i agree i agree not, yeah. fucking, walk, not fucking walking around like phone zombies but anyway that's run over yeah although i think we've become our own parents in a different generation from a different time in a different world and we're just going to look down on the the disgust of what future generations are doing and just say back oh, in my day, I was, I was just basically going around naked and drunk. Yeah. During the war. <laughs> yeah. During COVID fucking all that. Yeah. But yeah. Walking around, walking around naked while drunk is something I really miss doing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we got the pictures to prove it. Memories oh, mate, there's more. I'm sure there's more than pictures out there somewhere ah. spanning a good 20 plus years. Like, oh, the, amount, the, the amount of incriminating pictures and videos of me out there is just fucking ridiculous. I don't know how I'm A, I'm still alive, and B, I've gotten away with the things I've gotten away with. Like, life is shit. Be happy. Fuck <laughs> it, man. <laughs> as, the, way, the, way I, the way I see it, you know, is, as long as you're happy and you're not hurting anybody, then crack on. Speaking of cracking, I've already cracked open a, a Stella. I don't know if you can see that. Camera's blurring hey. it out. Geezer. Hey. Cheers. T-shirts. 
Yeah, you launched those just today, didn't you? I'm yeah, going to have to order so one of those. Just, uh, yeah, just uh, just today they uh, they came out. We've had them for we've had them for a little while, but obviously, like I, because I deal with all the merch. Um, trying to calculate shipping and fucking like inventory, everything is a bit of a ball ache, especially when you got a young kid and you're working full time as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, take, wait, 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 slave warriors, mate. Wait, wait slave warriors. That's it, mate. You got a fucking, you got a hustle. That's what it's all about. You got a hustle. Got a hustle. Um, yeah. I mean, fucking pint glass, mate. I mean, there's a shit ton I want to talk about and go over in regards to that. I mean, my understanding yeah, is my understanding with that was because it sort of came out of nowhere. I'm guessing it was sort of a project born out of um the two vocalists, Ben and Barney. And um yeah. You just sort of cobbled together like the EP Way of the Geezer had a bunch of guest vocalists on there: Street Soldier, Idle Hands, uh, MTXS, Soldier, Idle Hands, MTXS, Revelations. Yeah, we yeah. had a and- we had a load. Um, we had a load more others that we wanted to have, but um, you know how it is sometimes. Yeah, it just it just doesn't work out because of time constraints and um people not answering their emails but uh, you know <laughs> it is what it is at the end of the day what we what we got out of it was fucking brilliant like honestly it's even like it's year like over a year and it's still oh, fucking i still have it on repeat it's one of my favorite fucking albums that yeah i've ever ever heard it's, it's so it just creases me like yeah so it's basically the way pint glass started was yeah it's um ben and barney like they're um obviously they're like ben's if you don't know, if you don't know Ben Mason, he's uh, he's the singer of Bound in Fear, which is like a down tempo deathcore band, mm. and Barney Warner is the singer of Replacer, which is like a horrendously down tuned fucking beat down band. But like they're fucking, I've I've had the pleasure of seeing both bands live, and they fucking they're sick live. Like they're so fucking heavy, like really entertaining as well. Great energy, which is you know, for a band like Bound in Fear, you'd think they'd be like all statues playing fucking down in fucking drop set just going strong 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 but fucking <laughs> live they're really they're really energetic live which is great like it's great to see um so yeah like ben and barney are like best mates and uh what, like, as obviously i came in a little bit later but um as far as uh like as far as i remember like basically it just pint glass was born out of like ben and barney playing video games and uh, barney turns around and says ben do you know what we should start a beatdown band about working on site and doing geezer call outs and drinking Stella. <laughs> and Ben was like, I'll be around tomorrow. <laughs> and they, yeah. And they literally, they literally recorded, they wrote and recorded hype, the first single hive is hate like in a day and put it online. And it's like Ben like DM'd me like, cause me and me and Ben have been friends for a little while. Cause like, we've, we've played together. Um, I met Ben when uh, he was playing drums in Carbine and no second chance played with Carbine and pay no respects as part of pay no respects farewell tour. And that's how me and Ben became friends. And yeah, he messaged me saying like, yeah, this is some fucking jokey beat down thing I've done with my mate. What do you think? And I was like, dude, this is the funniest shit I've ever heard. It's like, it's just fucking stupid. Like, the lyrics, man. Just, the, yeah, the lyrics just, are just fucking oh, hilarious. Where's where's my tea? I'll fucking put you down a portal. <laughs> Get up the ladder, or I'll stab you in the bladder. Yeah, man. I was just fucking creasing for days afterwards, and like I, I could just see it like just blowing up like, on the internet. And it did that's the thing? It did. You had like all these like reaction channels, like Slam and yeah, Salmon, man. um, hardcore Slam and Salmon. There's a uh, fucking there's uh, I can't remember I can't remember his name but there's um there's this geezer who done like he done the whole EP like reacted to the whole EP and uh, <laughs> like, he's just literally like he's just picking up like he's just walking around and just like and like every, every now and again he'll pick up his desk his like computer chair and just throw it across the room. <laughs> it's the geezer. It's the geezer corn. It's the geezer. Hold on. (laughs) 
I gotta see this. Oh uh, mate, I can't I can't remember I can't remember his name. It's 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 this black dude. Like he's done loads of uh, he's done loads of reactions. But yeah, he's fucking like I was just creasing the whole time. But um yeah, I'm just watching all this unfold and like uh, and I'd you know like I I'd, I'd retire I'd consider myself retired from playing music at that point like being in bands like after leaving Cold Hard Truth. I was like, no, nah, I, I don't want to do it no more. And then like, I was just kept listening to this song and like just kept seeing everything. I was like, you know what? You know, fuck it. Why not? You know, it's something I've never done before. And uh, I'm a firm believer of like, if you, if you believe in something, do it. And uh, I honestly thought, you know, I can see this. This has so much potential, like so much potential for just dicking around without a care in the world. And I can honestly see this popping off live. And I'd, I'd, so I just messaged Ben and said, like, do you know what? Yeah, if, you, if you're ever going to do Pint Glass live and you want a drummer, I'll fucking hit me up. Nice. And he was like, oh, do you know what? I was about to ask you the same question. I was like, Snap. There we go. Sorted. Ah, sealed the deal right there, man. I mean, yeah, the yeah. online reaction already. I mean, that the way the Geezer EP has been out since October 2019. And um, yeah, if you had all the reactions and um, it sort of spread through word of mouth. I think you guys, it, yeah. it, start, it starts with the ter- Geezer course starts with Pine Class. So where it goes from there, who knows? But yeah. Um, that's it, another it, thing that made me laugh as well when uh, when Ben sent me Hive is Hate and I just saw the word geezer call. And I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> geezer call, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, that's just fucking... That's... How would you, like, define, like, like for example, if you got, like, sort of, like, people from outside of the UK, I mean, what would you define geezer and sort of the topics? Because it, it's it, it's sort of like, it's a very it's a very distinctly British thing. It's a distinctly English is, thing. Yeah, with like, mention of full Englishes, Stella Pints. Um, so, basically, ge- like, geezer, obviously, well... You, you, you're an American yourself, but you grew up in this country, so you're, yeah. you should be familiar with the term. Absolutely. Uh, for those who, aren't, who, those who aren't familiar with it, geezer is literally just another, it's a, it's a slang word for a, for a bloke, for a, for a man. You know, like you say, oh yeah, I met this geezer down the pub the other day, or I'm working with this geezer in fucking this firm, or like this geezer bumped into me in the street, so I fucking caved his head in. Uh, it's, it's, just another, it's just another way of saying dude or yeah geezer <laughs> i don't know i don't know where the term originates from um you know google it if you're really interested but obviously i i grew up in london and uh, everybody in london says geezer so it's, it's just one of those things they do um, especially the the ones of a cockney nature yeah exactly exactly but um the way that uh pint glass stereotypes geezer if uh well, for for lack for lack of a better word, like the the stereotype of the geezer is like yeah, just some fucking drunkard that works on a building site and likes fighting. That's that's all it that's all it is really. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's uh, not, that, it's not, that'd be a definition I could get by. Yeah, you know, it's it's not like specific to any class or race of geezer. It's just just a geezer that works on a building site, likes drinking and fighting. That's and that's pretty much what all the pint glass songs are about in some way or other, you know, the the entomology, I suppose, are the subjects, the basics of, uh, basics of pint glasses, working on site, Stella, pubs, food, pub food, you know, just shit like that. And just sort of twisted into like, sort of a, like how you'd write a beat down song or how you'd write a death metal song, like, you know, making it violent and funny, I suppose. Cause that's the thing with pint glass. It has to be like, we said, when we decided to be more serious about it, it has to be funny, you know, it has to be funny. Yeah, you know, you've got to listen to a pint glass song, at least find something in it that makes you laugh, be it like the, the wackiness of the lyrics or like the heaviness. Like that's, that's basically it, you know. Uh, it definitely shows as well, especially in the, um, in the entire EP, to be honest, like, cause you got elements of sort of like your, your beat down, almost like your slam death metal. Um, yeah. And, yeah, because it's all because it's all music that we're we're all into, you know. Like yeah. we don't, n- none of us, none of us in the band are genre specific, you know. Like we all listen to, we all listen to hip hop, we all listen to death metal, we all listen to pop music. We we listen to, if if we like it, we like it, you know. It's it's one of it's one of them ones, mm-hmm. you know. We're not fucking militantly like I only listen to beat down. Like we're it's not like that. And no, I'm not saying that a lot of people in beat down bands are like that, but uh, I know some people are. And you know that's that's fine. You know, if if that's your if that's your if that's your thing, then go for it, man. 
As long as you're happy, you're not hurting anybody. We come back to that one again. Yeah, there's a big audience for that kind of music, anyways. Is um, yeah, it's it brings in the crowds for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for them to go fucking nuts. Fucking, I tell you what, like, we um we were lucky enough to squeeze a couple of gigs in before the first lockdown, and they were just fucking wild. They were absolutely fucking wild. Like the first show we did down in Southampton, that was with uh, Your Demise 2004. Hang on, excuse me. Uh, now I got trap wind. Oh. I tell you what, I was lucky to. I was lucky changing the subject slightly. I was lucky to make it out here in time because after um after we had after I had my dinner and uh, like gave Philip a bath and put it into bed, like my ass just exploded. Like seriously, <laughs> fuck, like. <laughs> Well, I honestly, I, I was, I was scared. So I wasn't going to make it out here. Like, I didn't want to fucking, I didn't want to be that guy to be like, we've made all the arrangements. And then like, oh yeah, I'm not coming. I've got diarrhea in it. Like, don't worry I'm, about I'm it. Not, I'm not even joking. Yeah. I've got a fucking, I've got turkey foil thing here just in case I have an accident, you know? Uh, one thing I was going to mention um, just before that, um, like with the COVID lockdown and everything that hasn't exactly stopped Pint Glass from release, releasing a, a split EP with the band Strangled. Nope. And I... nope. The only, the only thing that is, the only thing that it's really stopped us from doing is playing shows. You know, like we've still, like we're, we're quite fortunate in the way that uh, the, the fan base is so fucking like, it's amazing. Like how dedicated the fan base is like, you know, we said, okay, so we can't go out and play gigs at the moment, but, Obviously, you know, we are, but we've marketed ourselves as this like satirical, funny band. So, you know, that's let's let's just dick around on social media. Let's just entertain people, you know, because, you know, we're all locked down. We've got, we ain't got fuck all to do. And uh, some people are finding it harder than others. So even just like a stupid picture of a fucking portaloo or a skip, you know, and like people, <laughs> it's anything to put a smile on people's faces, but, but, but it's still relevant to what Pine Glass is about, man. It and, works. you know, like the, you know the the, mer- the merch the merch the merch sales are quite consistent. So thank you everybody, much much appreciated. You know, like that's helping us fund future projects, and uh, eventually when we do get back on the road, you know, we want to have a proper like a really like proper stage set. You know, with like road cones and fucking site <laughs> safety notices and shit. Like we're like we're not fucking about, man. We're not fucking yeah. about. You, you, you know, briefly mentioned. Just, just, you briefly mentioned before that you had just a, like a few gigs before the lockdown came into effect. I mean, what That's were those right. like? Yeah, we were, they were fucking ridiculous. Like it was like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to like belittle any of the other bands that played the, cause the first, the first show we did was in Southampton with your demise 2004. And like I said, I don't want to belittle any of the other bands on the bill, but the same, but everyone was there at sea pint glass and that's just, for me that's just crazy you know first ever gig and like like they it just kicked off like there was you know there, there was people there like wearing fucking high vis and shit like it's just <laughs> ridiculous and like we like we hadn't even like made it public that we were gonna wear high vis on stage even though we do and <laughs> I, I just i just i just couldn't believe it and then yeah it just absolutely fucking kicked off like when we played and you know it was no means perfect you know like it was our first gig we'd only play together as bands like two maybe three times and you know it went really fucking well and then like a couple of weeks later we uh, had a hometown show in guilford because the band's based in guilford uh with street soldier and that nice. sold out like it was a fucking nice. sellout show and again you know i'm i sincerely regret that i didn't stick around to watch street soldier not because i didn't want to but because i had to the next day, I had to go to the hospital because because uh, my missus was pregnant, and uh, we were gonna. Obviously, this is the uh, the twenty week scan or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, not something I could miss. So, I, I literally played, packed up my shit, and left. And you know, I was I was gutted because I really wanted to see Street Soldier, but I'm sure I'm sure we will uh, our paths will cross again once uh, all this nonsense is over and done with, and we can start gigging again. <laughs>
it's it's just that fine art of balancing fun and life yeah especially especially when you're in your 30s like us fucking <laughs> yeah, fucking hell don't remind me um nah. coming back because yeah. i was going to mention the uh the split ep that you had was strangled um because I, I liked how that was sort of laid out because you had two tracks from the band strangled two, yep. two tracks from pint glass and then both bands sort of yep. meet in the, the middle for the um uh the track yep. i was at 7.26 i think it was called yeah that's um I, don't, that I can't remember it. I can't remember exactly what that means. I'd have to I'd have to ask uh, one of the guys from Strangled what it means. I don't remember. But um yeah, basically um this is the cool thing, like having people like Ben and Barney in the band, they're really sociable, like they, they chat to everybody and especially like bands that they like and like like Ben uh, Ben was Ben set, actually sent me the first Strangled EP and I was like, mate, this is sick. Like it's just heavy, just fucking angry. Like it's it's every it's everything that I like in heavy music, like blast beats, breakdowns, fucking <laughs> vocals, and like ah! it's it's just chaos. Like the whole thing was just chaos. Like yes, I fucking love this. And then because uh, obviously every band has a group chat, so we're we're dicking away in the group chat. And then uh, Ben turns around and is like, oh yeah, like the next so the next release is going to be a split with Strangled, and I'm like, sick, <laughs> hell yeah why not man why not you know they're fucking they're all they're an awesome bands they're they're based in oklahoma as well which is also great you know you've got a uk band and a us band on the same record and it turns out that they're like really big pint glass fans as well so you know the, the oh, whole nice. thing was just like just co- the, the whole thing it did, the whole process was so smooth like obviously uh, strangle churned out their tracks um, way the, with Way of the Geezer, like Ben and Barney wrote every wrote and recorded everything themselves. The um, the stra- the the strangled the strangled split. I wrote both the pint glass tracks because okay. yeah, because I, I had the ideas and the time to do it, and also like Barney didn't have uh, didn't have he was like he was obviously it's difficult like this the start of lockdown and uh, a lot of people were out of jobs as well, and uh, Barney was struggling, so he didn't have the time to put into it. So I was like, well, yeah, leave. I've got this, leave it with me. So I wrote the instrumentals and uh, probably about half, 50% of the lyrics. And then uh, <laughs> Ben and Barney done the rest. And yeah, it fucking came out really, came out really fucking good. And uh, props to Michael from Strangled for, for mixing and mastering the whole thing. Like he's, um, his, his stu- he, he runs a uh, Slamnasium studios in Oklahoma. So if, uh, if you're a band and looking for a, a good deal with like, Obviously, listen to Strangle, listen to the, the the Strangled and Pint Glass split, and those are all his productions. So yeah, if you want some, you want some fucking meaty, meaty sounding record for a good price, like go go hit him up. Yeah, Slamnasium Recordings. Um. I got to talk about the lyric video for no more disrespect because I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up showing that to even people that don't even listen to metal and they all yeah. laughed. They all creased. Yeah. At, at, Mission at accomplished. The <laughs> Sick. They all creased at all the lyrics that were coming up, especially like the, um, the bit where you had Jack Daniels ball to the head in the Jack yeah. Daniels font. That was a clever little yeah, touch. Yeah, that, um, that, that was the, um, the, the gays that done the, the lyric video. That was obviously... I mean, I didn't, I had nothing to do with that. Like, it was Ben that sorted that out. But um, whoever, whoever's idea that was, you know, that was a proper, that was a great touch. Like, drag, drag fucking... his corpse to the port of Lou. <laughs> Get the fucking Lou! <laughs> 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 yeah, fucking. <laughs> All the stuff about port of Lou's, man. Like, it's just, uh, come on, man. Like, to- toilet humour. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Joke in the... It's the oldest joke in the world, and it's still funny. Nate, I got a fucking vendetta against Porta Luz, man. The amount of fucking festival nightmares of a ma- mountains of shit think, and all of these yeah, Porta Luz, and you got nothing but the yeah. shitty blue water to flush it down with. It, it's yeah, it, Porta Lou think- paybacks coming, man. Porta Lou payback is fucking yeah. coming. Have you um have you heard of that band Gutalax from, no. from the Czech Republic? No, they're basically like this. Gore, they're, they 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 like this gore grind. They're fucking hilarious. Like they play in like hazmat suits and like all their songs are about <laughs> shit. <laughs> they're fucking joke. Like, there's a there's a video of them. I think it's uh, Obscene Extreme Fest in 2018 or 2019. I can't remember which one it was, but they actually 
they had a portaloo on stage <laughs> and with, whether it was full i don't know but they fucking they threw it out into the crowd and the crowd is like they were crowd surfing this portaloo during their set it's like oh, that's, that sounds fucking amazing oh, mate. one of the fucking one of the funniest things i've ever seen great oh mate i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, have to check think, them out now yeah got, got to lax like they're fucking they're 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 fucking hilarious as well yeah oh. another another one of them bands like you listen to and like you know straight away you don't have to take it seriously just just sit back and enjoy it and like you know, I, just, just 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 take it for what it is look i'm all and to be honest like you need humor even politically correct yeah. humor in a lot of bands now and look the humor goes all ways and given the the reach that pint glasses hell yeah hands, man laughter the re- is the language of the soul in it oh absolutely especially in 2020 and this year the way things are at the moment at, at the time of the yeah, recording man. we're in another lockdown forced in our homes and trying to social distance and all that shite social distancing i don't even know what that is anymore no, i don't even me, know what that is anymore fucking you know I'm, I'm out and about i'm doing doing my shopping like just getting getting bits and you know everyone's just fucking climbing over each other just to get stuff yeah and yeah, yeah. Uh, i was in, i was in the i was in the supermarket the other day and fucking you know you can't like you can't get some bits you know it's just how it is and this this fucking this woman was just kicking off at the the shop assistant, and there's me and two other geezers, and we're just like, you know what, sweetheart, these things happen. You know, you need to pipe <laughs> down. You need to fucking calm down. Like it's not his fault. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> they do just cram him into these superstores. Like yeah, fucking good luck trying to like stop the spread when you're just basically funneling people into new other stores. But like as does in Tesco's. Yeah, man. Yeah, but that, that but, that's just the way it is at the moment. Yeah, it, it's it is what it is at the end of the day. And uh, you know, there's there's no point in getting bent out of shape about it. No. I know it's difficult, you know, like I've 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 come I've come to blow I've almost come to blows with some people just, just being dicks, but you know, it's just not worth it, man. You know, it's it's not worth your health, it's not worth your sanity. Just yeah, no, just, le- just, le- le- just let it be, man. Least of all I've got, I've got more media. important things I've got more important things to worry about than some fucking douchebag on the train. Yeah, le- least of all on social media, where it really seems to be kicking off every other day. It's, I, I can't fucking view it. Too yeah, but what's new? It's, all, it's always been that way, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is it. There's one thing I wanted to ask you, um, because I wanted to bring this up, because given the reach that Pine Glass had, it it got the um, the parody treatment, if that's even possible, <laughs> by, uh, yeah, you know who I'm talking about, Raised by Al. Oh, the yeah, man, the fucking, builder cover. It's a, a, yeah, I'll tell you what though, like even before even before that one, even before the Bob the Builder cover, you know, there was a few bands popping up here and there, like with um, you know, like doing like the whole like singing songs about building and plumbing and drinking and whatnot. And do you know what? I don't give a fuck, man. You know, do do what you want. <laughs> You know, just 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 remember, just remember, just remember where you got it from, and yeah. uh, with the with the raised by owls thing, I tell you what, right? And um, I'm going to say this now. Fair play to them. I thought it was hilarious. It was like they done they done a really good job on it, you know. And for them to take the take the time out of their schedule and spend their own money on uh, producing that video, you know, that's cool, man. Fair play. You know? The only thing like. I would say though is like it would have been nice if they gave us the courtesy of actually saying like, oh yeah, if Bob the Builder was written and played by Pint Glass, because you know they put it as a geezer beatdown band, and like how many other geezer beatdown bands are there out there? It, you know the uh, the references weren't exactly subtle. There was that. There was no, Stella you know, in the there video. Was Stella, <laughs> there was High Viz, you know, and you know it's, it, it's they know where it's at. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery, as they say. But, um, you know, they're a, they're a much bigger band than us. Like, they have a mass, like, even bigger following than we do. You know, they play, like, Bloodstock and shit. So, you know, it would it would have been nice if they gave us that courtesy and, like, actually just said, yeah, we're ripping off Pint Glass. We're taking the piss out of Pint Glass. You know, I wouldn't have cared. The guys wouldn't have cared. You know, it would have been, like, safe, lads. But, you know, because because they didn't give us that courtesy, you know, that's that's kind of... That's kind of shit, but again, you know, like I said, it's nothing worth getting bent out of shape of. You know, at the end of the day, they've done a great job of it. So credit where it's due. You know, it was funny. It was really well done. 
a lot of people enjoyed it. So, you know, that's cool. Fair play to him. Uh, I understand, like, Pint Glass are currently writing a new album now. Uh, how's that going? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So um, we're, about, uh, we're about halfway through that now. Well, yeah, actually, no, we're more than halfway now. We've got most of the, most of the songs are mapped out. And um, obviously, <laughs> like, I, I contribute quite a lot of lyrics to Pint Glass. But um, even before I started contributing, like, Ben and Barney have got this, like, we call it the Pint Glass Bible. And it's just like, <laughs> just pages upon pages upon pages of lyrics about fucking, you know, just drinking and fighting and working on site and just, just general stupidity. And I'm looking forward to like, it. I'm looking so forward am it. I. Like, you know, I've, um, unfortunately, you know, I, I said to Barney, like, I want to contribute to um, write, like songwriting as well. But so I just haven't been able to because my, my laptop broke. <clears throat> And I just haven't had the time to, or the money to, to get a new laptop. I'm and, sure you'll uh, get a chance, though. I will, I will eventually, but um, it's whether it's in time to contribute to the album is a different story. But you know, I am, uh, I am working on it. it. Is it is it is top of my priority list, minus obviously my family. Yeah. So yeah, I will course. get, I will get back to it. Event, I will get back to it, and um, obviously, I want to write my own music as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's up there on my priorities. That's a perfect segue in what I was going to ask you next about, because um, like I've been following, you know, we've known each other now for probably at least 15 years and I've kind of followed every endeavor that you've been in. Um, yeah, easily. Cause, um, I was, where are we? I'm, thir- I'm 34 now and we, I was 16 when we, when we first met. Christ, late teens. So that yeah. Thought. <laughs> 18 years, bro. Fucking hell. Yeah, you, you've done the math right. Um, in that time, like you've done pretty much every instrument, at least every essential instrument for all them heavy stuff. So bass, yeah. guitar, drums, even some yeah. ventures into electronica in your spare time in your studio of do. I mean, multi-instrument, yeah, un- multi-instrumentation, basically. I mean, how did that mm-hmm. come about? I mean, what, what, what was your sort of journey into learning those multiple crafts? Cur- curiosity, man. You know, like um, when I when I first started playing, like, I was about, I don't know, 13, 14. And uh, the first the first instrument I wanted to play was bass because I was a I was a fucking massive Limp Bizkit fan back in the day. And and uh, I just I just wanted to learn how to play bass just so I could play um what's it called fucking <laughs> do 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 rearranged I wanted to rearranged, learn how to play yeah. that yeah mm-hmm. man and it just it just sort of went from there like obviously but I got I got into I got into music through my sister because like she's seven years older than me and uh, basically whatever whatever I whatever she was listening to I was listening to so. She went, obviously, you know, like we all go through phases of lif- listening to, to different stuff at different times. So as far back as I can remember, like she was listening to like 90s pop music for, for a while. And then she went into listening to like more of the, the grunge, you know, like Nirvana, uh, Screaming Trees, that sort of yeah. stuff. Uh, then she started getting into like Oasis and Blur. And... And then uh, she started listening to uh, like electronic music, like the like the rave like rave music, yeah. like uh, Prodigy, Chemical Brothers, that sort of stuff. And like remember, whatever she was listening to, I was listening to. Yeah, I remember and you then, saying um, she was a big Prodigy fan. Yeah, man, definitely. Like that's 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 pr- that's pretty much how it all started. It was like with with my sister. And then uh, one day we were in school and fucking um, and then uh, my, my mate Kyle comes in and he's like, "Oi, listen to this." And he gives me the first Slipknot album and that changed everything. Like nice. from there, I was just like, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> and it's like, I was just like, fuck, like this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Like, like it was everything. Like it was heavy. It was angry. It was just like just pure fucking chaos. I think um, pe- people our age, like I think they, I think we can all relate. And if they can't relate, they're fucking lying. I don't care who you think you are. Well, if we're old enough to appreciate the, when they were first released. If you didn't like, hear the first Slipknot album back in the back in the two thousand or ninety nine, and you liked it, and now you're saying you didn't, you never liked it. You're a fucking liar. 
<laughs> That's a call out. Straight up, you're a fucking liar. Oosh. I have no, I have no shame in admitting that Slipknot is still my favourite band. Fuck off. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think there is and, any um, shame in that, mate. <laughs> no, fuck that. I mean, like, come on, like, would I really be like a Slipknot fan if I didn't have one of these? The keg. Egg. <laughs> keg. But yeah. Um, yeah, so um, obviously get get like, and from there I wanted to learn how to play, and you know I'd got into Limp Biscuit by then, and so I decided, yeah, I want to fucking, I want to play bass. So got a, got uh, the cheapest bass I could find off eBay, and um, I've still got it actually. It's up there in pieces, some. Oh, what and, is the uh, old yeah, BTB? No, I oh, fucking I sold that a long time ago. But no, it was the um, the court base, uh, the fretless oh, base. That one, yeah, 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 I remember that one. Yeah, that was it, it wasn't it wasn't fretless, but um, I ended up defretting it because I wanted to learn how to play Jack of Pistorius tunes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I I didn't I didn't have the money to buy a fretless bass, so I was just like, fuck it, I'll just take the frets out of my bass and uh, fill it up with epoxy. <laughs> it worked, you know. It, it did work. I remember playing. It, it did bit. work. Yeah. So, but from but from there, like I just sort of started going. Down, that's how I got into death metal as well. Like just sort of going down this fucking this rabbit hole of like heavy music. So obviously, you know, from Slipknot, I started getting into death metal. Like from uh, like I heard Cannibal Corpse from uh, from some some bloke at a show. And yep, so I started listening to Cannibal Corpse and then Deicide, Morbid Angel, Dying Fetus. Uh, suffocation. I was like listening, listen to bands like these, and then I uh, got started getting into Belfigore, uh, Nagelfar. Like so, sort of going towards more black metal as well. Like, I just mm-hmm. literally, like, whatever I could get, I just I would listen to. Yeah, and you built but up I a collection of instruments in that time as well. Um, yeah, fucking hell. Like, um, obviously, I was playing, but like bass was my main instrument. But um, you know, I started playing guitar like simply because, like, you remember Final Ruin. Yeah, like yeah, um, yeah. we um we wanted to, we wanted to get a second guitarist, and then Kaz, our guitar player, he just turned around to me and was like, "Ian, why don't you play guitar?" And I was like, uh, "Because I'm not very good at guitar, I'm better at bass, you know." Because like fucking, I could fucking shred the bass, man. Like I can't really do it now, but back in the day, like I could fucking, you know, I, I could that. play like I could play anything fast, like. I, to, I actually learned, like, uh, you know, the uh, the Cryptopsy album, None, Shall Vile, None, None So Vile. Of course, classic. I learned, I learned that in its entirety on bass, like, purely by ear. Wow. Yeah. Just, that's just a, because, just. That's not an easy album. album. It's it's nah. not an easy album. It's super flashed. And to keep up with yeah, the man, flow, I, more I, and prob- more I probably wasn't even. I, I probably wasn't even playing it correct either, but I, in my in my head, I I was. <laughs> I didn't care. I just I just I just put the record on and just fucking jam it. And uh, eventually, like, I'd sort of yeah, these this these shapings and like how to use my fingers, like this all makes sense. And then he turns around and is like, "Oh yeah, you should play guitar." And I was like, "Well, I don't want to do that." And then like at the back of my mind, it just kept sort of like coming back up, like, "Oh yeah, play guitar, play guitar, play guitar, play guitar." And I had some guitars, you know, like I had my Warlock, I had the um, the Ibanez 7 string, uh, which is over there in pieces. Uh, actually, both guitars are there, so there's yeah, the Warlock. Yeah, you still got them after which, all this time. Yeah, nice. which, is, which is actually fully, the Warlock is actually fully functional. I actually, uh, I actually recorded a guitar solo for um, the new Cold Hard Truth album, which um, I've no idea when it's coming out. I haven't, I haven't actually spoken to Tim for, uh, for a while properly. I mean, uh, we do we do correspond occasionally. You know, we talk about music, we talk about our kids. You know, which yeah. is which is fine. And but yeah, I recorded a guitar solo with that. And the seven string is yeah, it's just in pieces at the moment because I've just been dicking around with guitars because I wanna. I'm I've been teaching myself how to to luthier, and um, I'm actually in the middle of building a guitar at the moment. So it's been one of my uh, many guinea pigs and destroyed instruments. Co- COVID project at the moment. Everyone's got a yeah, COVID you could project. yeah, you could say that. But it's, yeah. it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've just never had the time, the tools, or the uh, the knowledge to do it. But in this time, I just sort of like, I've been doing loads and loads of research, watching videos on YouTube, and just fucking like teaching myself how to fix and build guitars. So there it is. Now, I'm thinking to myself because when did drums enter the picture for yourself? Drums was um, I never the thing. The funny thing is I never intended to be a drummer ever. In fact, you know I. 
<laughs> I kind of still really don't consider myself a drummer. You know, I'm a, I'm I'm a I'm a guitar player. You know, really, heart, even after the, all this time, even after a decade of even after the all this time, yeah, for real, yeah, for real. It sounds it sounds crazy, but no, for real, like, I don't like fully consider myself a drummer. You know, I I can I consider myself a guitar player, but um, I love playing the drums. Like it's just so much fun and it's just something else to do you know like um so it started like when i was about sort of i don't know 17 18 i started taking an interest in playing drums because obviously like with like the bands that i've been in like and some of the drummers i've worked with like i've worked with some fucking awesome drummers like over the years and i was like uh, well i can do that you know, mm. I just I just take one look at what what, what someone will be doing. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And then I'd sit behind the drums and uh, sort of do it, but it's good enough. So like, yeah, fuck it. I managed to go like, yeah, I've done it. Fuck it. Yeah, I can play drums. And then uh, I actually saved up. And again, you know, that's another thing. It was like in, uh, just in the back of my head is like, oh yeah, I want to start start playing, start teaching myself how to play drums. So um, I saved up some money and I bought um, a Roland TD3 kit, just like the, this, the, the cheapest, smallest electric kit that I could find. Yeah. And I, over the space of, um, I don't know, a year maybe, let me, a year maybe less, I taught myself how to play uh, Fear, like Fear Factory's Digimortal and Archetype albums in their entirety on the drums. So because I like, just, I wanted to, because like, obviously, you know, I didn't, decide any of this consciously it just sort of like the little the gears the gears turning in my brain like i wanted to learn how to play double bass you know like from like all the like the, the music i was listening to like the biggest sort of um uh what they all or everything has in common blast beats double bass <laughs> I was like, yeah. So I just basically bought this, bought this kit, and taught myself how to do blast beats and play double bass. And that was it. That's so, usually um, the, the parts that most punters look out for is like blast yeah. beats and very fast double bass drums. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And obviously, me being like, I was a, I'm, I still am like a big, a big fucking Fear Factory fan. And yeah. you know, Ray, Ray, like Raymond Herrera, Gene Hoagland, fucking Mike Heller, they're they're. The, the 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 bass the the the, the, uh, the double kicks are insane, and I was like, yeah, I want to do that, and yeah, so I just taught myself like how to do that. Basically, you had your chance to basically essentially prove yourself when you got asked to join No Second Chance. I'm, I'm guessing that was kind of the first time you did sort of drums full time for a group. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, it's funny how that came about because um, like when the, when No Second Chance started, you know, I wasn't I wasn't in a band at the time, and I was just basically sitting around my mate's house with a fucking spliff in me and playing Xbox. <laughs> and um, da and Dave, the uh, guitarist, like me and him go back a few years because um, his band, his all his old bands used to play with my old bands. Like we were all on the same circuit, That's and right. um, he just ran. He just called me up out of the blue, like I wasn't expecting it, and I was like, "Fucking hell, you're right, Dave." And like he says to me, like, yeah, I've got um, I've got a pro got a proposition for you. So I'm um, I'm putting a hardcore band together, and I was just wondering if you if you knew any drummers. And I was like, well, not really, but I'll do it. And he was like, can you even play drums? I was like, yeah. All right. So um, I gave like we kept we carried on talking. So I said like, yeah, what do you what do you want to do? And he was like, yeah, so I'm, I want to put a band together that's like Immure, Bury Your Dead, Life Ruiner, that sort of stuff. And I was like, okay, that's um. That's different, you know. I've I've never done anything like that before, so yeah, fuck it. I've got nothing to lose. Why not? So yeah, I gave him uh, gave him my address, and uh, yeah, he came over a couple of days later, and uh, yeah, we started uh, we started writing. 
Yeah, the rest is a, a very long story. We'll touch upon that in a bit. I wanted to get back yeah, to the, the rest. The rest, as they say, is history. And the rest fucking, is history. yeah, ten, 10 years of it, man. Fucking crazy. Um, just coming back to the, the whole multi instrumentation, multi instrumentation project, if I could say it correctly. Um, I mean, all that, all that kind of sort of converged because I, I don't think this gets enough of a shout out. Was your project uh, pure beef against everyone? It was sort of this you attempted a sort of a one man sort of death metal band. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of yeah, that's that's kind of my fault though because uh, I never I never really pushed it. You know, just 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 laziness. That's that's all it is. And also, you know, I was um at that time I was like no second chance was touring fucking relentlessly as well. Yeah. So, you know, I was I was putting channeling all my energies into like writing and recording with no second chance, touring with no second chance. So, you know, pure beef against everyone was literally just it was just something else to do, you know, just another sort of you know, like that that video that we made. Yeah. You know, that was just <laughs> That was just that was just something that was just something we did for a laugh. You know, it was it, wasn't it was even, it wasn't it even was, meant to be taken seriously. It wasn't it wasn't. Um, just to give <clears throat> you know anyone curious enough who's seen it or wants to watch it. Uh, basically, we just uh, we filmed it basically in your old tool shed. You just had a bunch yeah, of in, in my in my pet in my fucking dad's tool shed. <laughs> Take, taking influences from uh, the video game Manhunt, which we both yeah, love, man. sort of the VCR kind of game. tape look. Um, and yeah, just just doing in this woman, this my wife's best friend Izzy. Um, that was great. I know that Tom Brewer. She was such a, she was parts. such a great sport about it. Like <laughs> literally, like every everything like we said to her was like, okay, you're right. I'm gonna I'm gonna smack you around the head with a sledgehammer. She didn't even bat an eyelid at it. She was like, yeah, come on, then. <laughs> yeah, for me, that was the start of just a, a whole legacy of sort of gore filled videos after that point but um coming back to that though like the first thing i was thinking about when i was shopping around for items like what would look like blood in a black and white video chocolate sauce chocolate sauce, chocolate <laughs> chocolate sauce. sauce. hey it worked and we we had to include obviously the plastic bag again for manhunt and standard all that jazz yeah. nah, that was a great laugh um ledge hammers and crowbars like, when you think about it, like <laughs> balaclavas, what you, what eight you were string doing, guitars, eight string guitars, just just all the good yeah. stuff. And I'm thinking like that was a bit ahead of its time because now you're getting all of these kind of these these slam bands just sporting that look and those heavy breakdowns and chugs. It's becoming a common occurrence and featuring on it slam worldwide. Was, because um, where are we? Because that was I I actually bought the like the the RG two the RG twenty two twenty eight the eight string. That was the first ever like production eight string, and I bought the first of the first of the UK shipment. So I was one of the first in the UK to get one. And you know, this is the time when uh, like eight strings, like the only people really using it at the time was Meshuggah. You know, yeah. nobody else is using eight strings. <laughs> This is pre degent as well. It was just before degent yeah. became a thing. Yeah, exactly. And nobody really like at that time, you know, like nobody really knew what to do with uh, with an eight string. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just fucking like okay. So I'm I'm playing in I'm playing in drop B. Like no second chance plays in drop B. So and I've I've been playing in drop B for years. It's my favorite tuning. Yeah. And like okay, so what if I just play this, but just on an eight string? Yeah, fuck it. That works. And that's, ba that's basically what um, all these beatdown bands that are using eight strings, that's what they're doing. You know, they're just they're just um, transposing like your chromatic riffs down onto an eight string. You know, fuck it. Why not? If it works, it works. And, and plenty of binaries sounds good. as well. Plenty of zero, yeah, zero, absolutely, ones. Man. Of course, it's, yep, it's got to be done. Um, one more thing regarding uh, coming back to drums. I mean, what kit or current kit are you using, or what kits have you had? Just for any of the sort of the drum nerds out there. Uh, for my my current drum kit is uh, is an Audrey Fluence, and uh, Audrey is uh, it's a company based in Brazil, and um, 
the only the only place in the UK that sells them is Wembley Drum Centre. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but at the time, that's that's what it was. And uh, I bought it because um, I wanted more of a high end kit because I was using my first my first drum kit was a Sonor Force, which was I got cheap off of eBay, and uh, it was a good little kit. Like it lasted me. It lasted me a lot of tours. Like I ended up, I ended up giving it to charity because I couldn't sell it. It was just so beaten up, nobody would buy it. So I just like, there's a um, there's a charity that does stuff for disabled children called Orchid, which uh, my mum volunteers for. So um, I just said, you know what, just take the take the take this down to Orchid. Let the let the kids have it. You know, I've I've got no more use for it, and they'll find more draw out of it. So yeah, I just just ended up donating it to charity. That's so. Um, so the uh i mean it's I, well i apologize about the state of uh my studio it's this my studio slash guitar workshop slash um merch warehouse it's uh, as you can see there's insulation because i'm uh, i'm redecorating philip's bedroom at the moment philip's my son i'm redecorating my son's bedroom right now so you know there's insulation there there's a beer keg um the drums are in pieces there's drill bits so uh, <laughs> yeah but yeah i saw but yeah that's that's the that's the finish of it like sort of a transparent blue mm. and, uh, i just i just saw it and fell in love with it i was like oh my god that's, that looks sick and um i gave myself a budget of uh, 800 quid because you know i wanted to have something half decent but i didn't want to go into like pearl masters dw territory which is just silly money yeah. so i saw that and i was like it was 800 quid and it was also i wanted to use two floor band is like one rack tom one floor tom i wanted to use two floor toms and this kit had two racks and two floors so i was like all right so you know it gives me uh gives me some options nice nice yeah the, so yeah the i went, big went, went ahead and bought it nice. yeah and that's um that's that's the kit that i ended up using on the burden of life album the uh the uh, no second chance is second album yeah, that's that's the kit i ended up using on it and uh, all the tours subsequently after that as well the tour with malevolence we did after that as no it's before that actually before burden of life we went on tour with malevolence in, around europe that's that's the kit that i took out with me and uh, yeah both me and charlie from malevolence used it fucking no second chance like we got to get into that this because since its formation officially in 2010 that was a pretty much a non-stop ride of gigs between yeah. the uk but mostly europe like you found more I, I suppose sort of fame or just appreciation in places like france and belgium appreciation is uh, the word i would choose to describe it because um you know and uh, i hate i hate to say it but um the uk scene and you know, don't get it twisted, yeah. Like the UK scene's great. There's a lot of fucking. There's a lot of good bands around the UK, but unfortunately, and I think a lot of people agree with me on this, European hospitality is just shits all over UK hospitality. You know, you go, you'll play a gig in the UK anywhere, and you're lucky to get a pint and a packet of crisps. Whereas you go out to Europe, you know, you'll get beer tokens or even free bar. You know, you'll get a meal, you'll get fucking lodgings. Like if you're if you're a touring band as well, and you know, like. Yeah. And the people out there as well, like they just seem more gracious, you know, like they're more, they, they feel more into it. Like this, you know, I've, I've played, I've played shows in the UK to like hundreds of people and it's just fucking just a room full of statues. Whereas like you have the same capacity out in Belgium and it's a fucking riot, you know, like what's, yeah. I, I, I don't understand like what it is, you know, is it a fucking... Is it a trendy thing? Is it a fucking like I don't know this band, so I'm not going to mosh to them? Like, I don't, I don't understand it. I'm not going to try and understand no, I it. Saw, it is what it is, you know. I saw, I saw that phenomenon as well. Like I can back this up because I, I went with you guys on one of your, I guess, regular weekends. Yes, you did, Europe, and it was they, like two shows. Yes, you did, and they and they were regular as well. You know, we were going out there like twice, sometimes three times a month. Yeah, because it, it was nonstop, basically. I mean. Yeah. You brought out that sort of split with um, Beta, yeah, we, uh, and that was around we, 2010. Yeah, we'd done the, the split with Beta, who, um, unfortunately, they, um, they they split up afterwards, but half of the members of Beta went on to form Tempers Fray, and uh, they, they, had a, yep. they, had a, they had a pretty good run for themselves as well. 
and and rightly so because yeah. they're fucking they're awesome musicians and they're, and they're but all the like both their records they put out but the, the, both the ones that I heard anyway fucking awesome records like really yeah. really underrated band it's a shame they, they're, it's a shame they're not together anymore but you know life gets yeah. in the way you know it's just one of those things but um yeah so we like we um we actually carried on with that split for over a year you know we done a year's worth of touring on that split that's how fucking well obviously it's, it's hard to tell and uh, of course you know so social media wasn't as it was big back then but it wasn't as big as it was now and uh, also there's my personal ignorance of not taking notice of these things you know i was just like fucking just give me a pint and a fucking gig you know i don't give a fuck what people are saying on facebook and i still don't but you know it just seems like we hadn't put a record out for a year and yet we were still getting show offers coming out of our ears like it was just crazy yeah, but even then, like when you were recording stuff, it was quite closely knit together. Um, you had the you recorded the album uh, "Never Ending Fear" sometime in 2011. That was a Crow's fucking Nest. like uh, "Never Ending Fear" was a fucking <laughs> it was a trip, man. Like, but like literally, like we um because we we'd signed to Good Life Recordings like to to put the album out, and like there's there's a picture of us somewhere on uh, Good Life's Facebook, and uh, we'd we'd all of us like we we were coming back from uh, playing a show in Tournai or Dunic, or however the fuck you pronounce it, whether you speak French or Belgian, I probably pronounce both completely wrong, but anyway, <laughs> and like, yeah. we got so fucked up that night, as we always do, you know, like, all, it's always a fucking party, and <laughs> like, there's a picture of us, and like, we look absolutely haggard in the, the Good Life office after we'd, uh, after we'd signed with them, <laughs> and um, we're like, okay, <laughs> like, we've, we've, we've signed the deal, and uh, we've still got two more tours to do. And then we're going into the studio. We haven't written any fucking songs. <laughs> so it was literally like about two or three weeks before we were due to go into the studio. Me and Dave like pretty much locked ourselves in, in, my, in my garage. And we just churned the whole album out in that time. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, how the fuck did you even manage all those gigs to begin with? I mean, that in itself is a phenomenon. I ain't got a fucking clue, to be honest with you. Like, we were just fucking, we were just gassed, you know. Like, we were just so fucking excited. Like, we we couldn't believe it. Like, you know, we had like we had twenty, we had twenty three shows booked before we even played our first. Fuck. Like after after we put that, after we put that demo out on MySpace, and yeah, we had twenty three gigs booked before we'd even played our first gig. Like. It's just, I don't I still don't understand how that happens. It was pretty much non-stop even from that point. Um yeah, it was. I mean even when you were so <laughs> Even when you changed vocalists and recorded the um, Face Reality EP, uh, yeah, Face period. Reality, which uh, which we did on Ruction. That's right. I mean, I'm un correct to understand it was recorded 2012, released early 2013, um, and then yes, this is fun never I'm... stopped after that. Yeah, I say if, uh, if if memory serves me, we'd um... oh, fuck it. No, no, I'm sure. That's the problem. Like those, the early years of No Second Chance were. Uh, now they're a, a huge fucking blur for me because of all the uh, the drinking and the the drugs and whatnot and uh, <laughs> yeah so it's all a it's all a bit of a blur to me yeah like, i can't i can't pinpoint specifics no, but no, um i mean so yeah basically one, yeah but yeah <laughs> after after obviously because um owen left the band and then Stu came in and yeah that, that, that did, it, it didn't stop us you know we just yeah. We, we did not take our foot off the gas pedal. Like no. basically we've like, we've, we've ran like, you know, like you, when you're running a car and you just like just drive and drive, 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 drive. And then eventually the gas runs out and then you're running on fumes. That's, that's basically sums up no second chances existence. Yeah, you know, like the... even like, even yeah. when, even when we ran out of gas, we just still carried on going until the car stopped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what he's saying. I mean, I'll fast forward a bit, obviously, because he's since sort of released an LP and another EP after that. And yeah, it rants, well, I mean, like, um, but with but with the um, the face with the face reality EP, like we um, we we'd done a tour with Warhound around Europe. Like they they come over to 
wherever that's wherever that is <laughs> they came <laughs> over to europe and um we done uh, we didn't do the whole tour with them we did the we did the um the french spanish and portuguese leg of um their european oh, wow. tour that was fucking awesome because like we um like obviously you know we've been we've been to spain like as like as holidays you know but we never actually played it we never actually played there so like it was for us like we saw it as an opportunity to go to go to spain go to go to portugal you know not just to play shows but also just like a lad's holiday that's that's what most of our tours like we um we considered like yeah business is business but at the same time like it was like all of our tours were lads holidays yeah does that include the uh the u.s tours that you did hell yeah dude like both both the u.s tours you know like we uh we we considered them lads holidays as well although um touring out in the u.s is uh, is very different to, to touring in the in the U, in in the uk in europe like the biggest uh, the biggest difference we found with uh, with the us is um basically <laughs> no one gives a fuck i mean that was our that was our experience like because i mean let's let's be real you know like we we went out to the us like just just to see if we could do it you know it was more of like a see if we, we could prove to ourselves that we could book our own tour in the us like completely diy style and go out of there and actually complete it without getting arrested and getting deported you know mm. that was that was our goal like just just literally just to prove to ourselves that we could do it and we did it yeah twice didn't you twice you yeah twice yeah yeah man but the um but the, the like literally what we did was we had um um we, we established contacts so um it was it, dave dave sorted out everything pretty much himself and um we so we established contacts and uh there was a band called sick of the most who was signed to good life at the time like same as us and uh dave got in touch with joe their their guitarist who is now the singer of a band called departed who are like a new, new jersey beatdown bands so okay fucking good actually you should you should check them out they're fucking heavy be, yeah but um, yeah, so we got in got in contact with Joe, and uh, we ended up shipping our guitars out to his house. And uh, I bought I sent I sent out my cymbals, and uh, I ended up just like borrowing bit various bits of equipment from band members at each show, which uh, which in the US is kind of frowned upon because like every band at every gig has their own equipment. I like. Is, is my experience every band had their own backline their own rigs everything like even at local shows that's you know, like unthinkable here, in the uk it's almost. crazy like, like 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 in the us like fair enough you know everyone's got their own fucking station wagons and shit and like equipment out there is like so easily accessible whereas over in the uk you know it's just not logistically possible to do that like especially like for like diy punk gigs you know you, you just can't fucking do that you know, you'd have a band that would provide the back line or provide the drums or whatever, and uh, every band uses it. You know, that's that's kind of the unwritten rule, and uh, everyone's cool with it. But yeah. you know, <laughs> I thought I was like, literally, I went up to the, I went up to this geezer and I said to him, "Was like, mate, can uh, is it all right if I use your drums?" I thought he was gonna fucking knock me out. <laughs> Seriously, like he looked at me and was like, he looked at me like, "What? Um." Can I borrow your drums, please, mate? <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking, it was, it was, it was weird, man. Like, it was honestly, it was one of the weirdest tours I've ever done. But I mean that in a good way, though, because like the experience of it, you know, like, I've been to, I've been to the US a couple of times like, as a tourist. So of course, you know, you're staying in like hotels and whatever. You're only seeing like the touristy bits. Like where we were, like in most parts, was we were out in the fucking sticks. We were in the fucking ghetto, you know, like we're seeing the real states, you know, we're not seeing all the shit that the tourists see, you know? And remember you tell me one time you, you ended up playing a show whilst there was like a WWE style Royal Rumble going on. Yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, that was on the tour with drowning and uh, triumph over shipwreck. Unfortunately, uh, triumph over shipwreck aren't a band anymore, but they're um, the members of triumph. But, but to, to put it in perspective, um, triumph over shipwreck, they're a, they're a grindcore band from El Paso. And um, they're sort of like uh, Dillinger Escape Plan, Converge, that kind of stuff. And um, which was a, it was a weird billing, actually, because you got um, us, who is like a, a heavy hardcore band, uh, Drowning, who are a beatdown band, and Triumph Over Shitwork, which were a grindcore band. So a bit of a weird billing, but at the same time, you know, like all of us, every single one of us on that tour, we got on like a house on fire. Like it was 
honestly, I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a, a, lo- a lovelier bunch of lads to tour with. Really, really fucking cool guys. And um, but yeah, so um, Triumph over Shipwreck aren't a band anymore, but they're called they're, the members went on to form another band called No Suffer. Mm. So they're, they're worth checking out. So a similar kind of music, you know, like Grindcore, like Dillinger Escape Plan-esque kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, um, this was in, um, this was after we'd driven up from, uh, we'd driven up from uh, Atlanta up to fucking somewhere in Indiana. So like, we'd driven through the night. It was ridiculous. Like, it was sketchy as fuck as well because um, our driver, bless him, <clears throat> he kept falling asleep. And by the time we got, no, 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 fuck me, no. We drove from Miami. We drove from Miami. That was it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we drove from Miami to Atlanta and then from Atlanta up to fucking uh, wherever it was in um, in Indiana. So um, our driver, bless him, like he fell asleep before we'd even left Georgia. So um, Dave ended up doing all the driving despite not having a valid license in the US, not having insurance. <laughs> so it was illegal as fuck. With uh, ele- with eleven other geezers in the van as well, like it was it was illegal as fuck. And uh, I'll tell you what, like fucking, I have a lot of respect for Dave for his driving stamina. Like that dude can fucking, he just will not stop. No, he just will not stop. Like he doesn't he fucking, sleep. He dro- he seriously, doesn't sleep. like seriously, he drove us from Barcelona to fucking Mons in Belgium fuck. on one run. Fucking That's an eighteen hour drive. Jesus. And he fucking he fucking maxed it in one. Now. I don't, I don't drive. So, but everybody else would, everybody else is fast asleep. So of course, you know, you're driving, someone needs to ride shotgun and keep them company. And, you know, I don't sleep either. So it's, it's, it's usually when we do night drives, it's up to me to, uh, to keep them going. Jeez. You know, Fucking but hell. um, obviously we were up in the, we were up in the Pyrenees and uh, Dave was struggling. I was struggling. And uh, I kept like, <laughs> and none of them bastards back there volunteered to uh to take to take anyone's place but you know yes, we got there in the end but there. fucking yeah we got to the, we got to indiana sorry i digress a little bit there no, that was, um, that's yeah, fine yeah so we got to indiana and uh <laughs> i just like that, that it was it was already said like yeah there's going to be like a royal rumble going on and like you know I'm not a wrestling fan. I think it's a load of bullshit. You know, sorry, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Roast me in the comments if you want. I don't give a shit. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> so I'm watching them setting up this wrestling ring and I'm like, I'm fucking about, I'm on my 10th PBR by then. So I'm just like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> this is going to be a laugh. It's going to be good. And it was, it was fucking jokes. Like, it's just the most surreal thing anyway. Like you're, you're standing in the middle of a fucking hockey arena and there's a fucking rest. There's a wrestling ring there, and you're watching like thirty grown men like pretending to slap each other. <laughs> it was funny as fuck. How and was like that one of them, build? Like, how was that build? Were they wrestling as the bands were playing, or was it just bands first? Then no, wrestling? no, it was um, no. They were they were wrestling. It was like a it was like an intermission. So like you had um, it was like an it was like an all day job. There was about ten bands playing. So they oh, had wow. um, they had five bands, and then the wrestling, and then the next five, and then the last five bands. Sorry, only in America. Only in America. Only in America. You can find something like that. Yeah. No. Seriously. Like um. Both, both the US tours were some of the hardest tours I've ever done, like in terms of like be, being being so, a being so far from home. I mean, I travel quite well, but um, I felt I felt particularly homesick in the States. So I, I don't know what it is, you know, like um, obviously, you know, we, we, sp- we speak the same language. You know, we're we're very similar, but we're very different as well. Whereas like you go out to the mainland yeah. and, uh, you know, you know, you know what you're getting. You know, you go to Germany, you know, you know what you're getting. You go to France, you know what you're getting. You go to Poland, you know what you're getting. You go to America, you ain't got a fucking clue what you're getting. <laughs> there is a bit of a, a slight culture difference. I mean, you got to think of the difference of continents as well. Difference of uh, mm-hmm. of landscape, yeah. of layout, lay yeah. the land. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I remember um, we were staying uh, we were staying around um, one, of the, one of the promoters' houses in, uh, in Syracuse. And... Um, <laughs> 
he had a, he had a, he had a party. Like he's um, like him and his mates were all straight edge, but um, you know that doesn't matter. You know, like his mates were all hanging out. Like we were there drinking beers and smoking and whatever, and uh, we were just mingling and having a good time. And um, we got talking about weapons, and there was a girl there, and uh, it it absolutely blew her mind that handguns are illegal in the UK. And uh, it even blew her mind as well. Like, as we like we said, like yeah, like even if you get caught with a knife, you know, like you're looking at fucking like you're gonna get you're gonna get tucked up like a kipper, and. And she was like, what, like even one of these? And she pulled a fucking butterfly knife out of her handbag and just started doing all the fucking stuff with it. And I was like, fuck. And the next thing you know, she pulls a fucking Glock out of her handbag and puts it on the table. <laughs> and was like, so if I got caught with this in England, would I get, would I go to jail? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking surreal, man. I remember you told me as well, it might have been in Syracuse, New York as well. You were staying at this promoter's house and when one person busts out a gun, everyone got out of their trailers with their like their ARs yes. and, and started firing yeah. off. Yeah, fuck. That was um that was on the, the second tour with drowning because um we were supposed to play uh yeah, it, was it Syracuse? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was. I think it was, but yeah, the um the promoter bailed out on us. I'm not gonna mention his name, but if you're watching this, fuck you, wanker. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so um yeah the, the promoter was looking after us and he said well i was um i was supposed to go and have dinner with my pet no that was it the the show before was in syracuse we were supposed to go uh, up to upstate somewhere in upstate like with the the towards uh, niagara falls we were supposed yeah, to was, go up there okay. but the, the promoter bailed on us but that actually benefited us because we were going to cleveland the next day so that kind of that kind of like we were closer so like fuck it we'll stay in Syracuse and then go to Cleveland afterwards um so like yeah Josh so he goes um yeah I'm actually gonna go have dinner with my parents so and uh, they I've explained the situation to them and they've said you're all invited so we're like sick happy days and like Josh's parents were lovely you know like obviously you got a bunch of you got a bunch of guys from Texas you got a bunch of guys from from England you got a bunch of guys from Chicago and we all rock up and like Oh shit! They live on a trailer park. No, no, nothing wrong with that. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But we're like, all right, this is this is new. This is different. You know, I've never been on a trailer park before. So, all right, this is cool. So, of course, you know, like we make acquaintances and um, you know, have a few, start having a few drinks, having a having a food. The guys are playing uh, American football as well, or hand egg, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> roast, <laughs> roast me in the comments. I don't care. Roast me in the comments. But um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, eventually uh, the guns come out. So um, obviously um, Josh's dad had a few guns and, you know, we start, you know, we got a load of beer cans. So we get the beer cans lined up and like, we take it in turns to shoot the guns. And uh, <laughs> as uh, as the minutes tick, eventually you start hearing more and more gunshots getting louder and louder and bigger and bigger. And uh, <laughs> and Josh says, oh, oh, yeah, this is normal. You know, as soon as one person like hears the guns and they want to get their gun out that's bigger, and then the next person wants to get their gun out that's bigger, and so on and so on and so on <laughs> until the next thing you know, <laughs> sounded like a fucking like Browning fifty caliber going off, like <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> fucking hilarious, man. Like uh, seriously, I would have had more fun if I hadn't caught heat stroke because oh, like it was it was it was a baking hot day. And of course, I, I've had way too much to drink, so I'm dehydrated. And then, like, the sun just burning down on my fucking ginger complexion, and that was it. Man. <laughs> Game over. And just to jog your memory once more, I think it was yeah. on one of those tours. Um, I remember you telling me you met a band and played with a band that was selling knives as merchandise. Yeah, no fucking chance from Brooklyn. <laughs> that's, that's what they were called. They were called no they, fucking chance. They were called chance. no fucking chance. So yeah, no second chance is playing with no fucking chance in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> they were really, I'll tell you what though, they were really sweet guys. They were really, they were really nice, really friendly. They were up for having a drink with us, like having a talk. Like we had a lot in common. It was great. And they despite were actually selling, really selling knives. Despite yeah. selling knives. <laughs> yeah, they were actually really, like musically, they were really fucking good bands, like very similar to, very similar to us. <laughs> but but yeah, just like... all their all their merch, but all their merch, they didn't sell any t-shirts. They just sold knives and hatchets and fucking tracer bullets with no fucking chance engraved on them. <laughs> fucking brilliant. 
It's like, oh, don't mind the knives. And, um, they're, they're just our, they're just our, how, how we make money around these parts. Something like that. Well, I think I think they just did it for a laugh. But, well, <laughs> mind you, they probably didn't. They're actually probably deadly serious about it. Because <laughs> because um, at one point, um, I think it was the uh, the owner of uh, the pub that we were playing in. Like he 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 told them to put them away or like even confiscate them himself. And uh, the and the, and the drummer, I think it was the drummer. He come down and was like, "Where the fuck are our weapons, man?" <laughs> and like he just kicked, like just kicked off hard. Like, where the fuck is our weapons? Shit! And like fuck. people were buying them as well. You know, like there was there was one point when like one when we were playing, and there was like a couple of blokes in the pit swinging machetes. <clears throat> what? They fucking like. They bought these machetes with no fucking chance engraved them, and they're just fucking swinging them in the pit. And like, Jesus Christ! Because of course, you know me, me, pl- me playing drums. You know, I'm sitting behind the kit. I've got the best seat in the house. You know, I see everything, and I'm there, just like, what the fuck is going on out there? <laughs> they had the knives out even during your set. <laughs> Jesus, wait, it was it was surreal. Like honestly, you know, I thought I'd seen some mad shit over here, but out there it's, just, it's a completely different world it really is like considering like none of these people have health insurance as well like they go fucking ham they go in like seriously nothing to lose i guess <laughs> maybe uh, i don't know i mean we've touched on crazy tour stories i mean what what's one you can think of off the top of your head that sort of sticks to mind um <laughs> Coming back to coming back to the US as well. We were in um, uh, where are we? We were in Boston, and uh, we'd finished the show, and uh, we were just waiting for. Uh, we was Brian, the uh, the singer of Drowning, like he'd gone to because the promoter fucked us over as well. So like Brian went off to uh, to to get the try and get some money out of him, and we were just we like we were all sitting in the van, and <laughs> like. <laughs> There's a, a car, there was a car parked like a bit like about I don't know 20 30 meters away from us and fucking the the biggest blackest dude you've ever seen comes around the corner with these two girls and like they start fucking like playing with each other and shit on the car and like we're all in this van just watching them and it's like yes lad yes yes <laughs> and then the next thing you know fucking the girl gets down pulls the trousers down and starts giving him a fucking blowy in front of all of us. <laughs> and then he gets to go on the car and starts fucking macking it in front of everybody. What? <laughs> and yeah, this is in fucking Boston. And I was like, mate, fuck you hell. like seriously, you can't fucking you can't make this shit up. You can't fucking write it. And the best part about it was he'd obviously, you know, bear in mind there's about eleven of us inside this van, and we're all just like, Way! he fucking turns around, like, right, he's like this, yeah. He turns around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god fucking I'll, ne- I'll never forget i'll never forget that as long as i live it's fucking hilarious uh-huh. um as far as um as far as other tour stories go um i do have some i've got some pretty fucking good ones but unfortunately uh not for myself but for other people they're very incriminating so uh yeah. i need to be careful with uh with what i say but um feel if anybody's anyone that's watching this and wants to hear something, you know, feel feel free to slide into my DMs and we can uh, discuss this further. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, speaking of criminal, um, I'm going to segue this into when you joined uh, Cold Hard Truth. I mean, how did that come mm-hmm. about? Uh, well, basically, um, no no second chances on tour with Bulldoze at the time. Like Bulldoze came over to the UK for the first time in God knows how long, and uh, we were our main support. And uh, we, we were playing up in Manchester with Bulldoze and Broken Teeth and Tempest Frey. And um, was Tempest Frey playing it? No, Tempest Frey wasn't playing it. No, because um, Nick, who's the drummer of Tempest Frey, he was driving Nine Bar. So Nine Bar uh. was playing it. But that's that's where that came in because Nick was there because uh, Nick Nick was driving Nine Bar. Yeah, so, shout out um, to Nick Cyril. Hope you're doing good, buddy. Nick Cyril. Yeah, man. Hope you're, I haven't spoken to him in a long time, but uh, seems to be doing all right from uh, what I've heard. But um, yeah, so <laughs> and um, the Cold Hard Truth boys were there, and uh, Cold Hard Truth's been one of my favourite bands like ever since I ever since I first heard them, and we've been we've been booked to play uh, the Eruption Records uh, Damage Control Fest in um, in London that year. I 
I can't remember what year it was, 2012, 2013, something like that. Anyway, and um, yeah, so I was talking to the guys from Cold Hard Truth and like, I was really excited because like, like, we'd played with Cold Hard Truth before. And like they're honestly like they were one of the best bands I'd ever seen live. I like, was just so fucking heavy, and I was like, "Oh, sick!" Get to play with Cold Hard Truth again. And um, it turned out that their drummer had quit for whatever reason. And um, <laughs> and <laughs> so I was talk- I was talking to I was talking to Lee, the, the guitar player, and I says to him like, "So um, so you guys going to do the the London gig? Like, what are you going to do about a drummer?" And he was like, oh, "I don't know." You know, like we've got we've got a guy, but uh, he's not very good. So we'll see how it goes. And I said, well, if you want, I'll do it. And uh, no, the, the guys were like, yeah, that's a good idea. So, um, yeah, got talking to them. And I kind of knew how to play their songs anyway, just just by sitting and jamming them in uh, in my garage. And uh, I did. Um, and I ended up doing the, the damage control show. And um, I played a gig with Cold Eye Truth in Bristol which is with Nasty and Pay No... Because Nasty and Pay No Respect were on tour together. Nice. So it was Nasty, Pay No Respect, Cold Hot Truth, Tempers Fray. I think there was another band as well, but I can't remember. But um, that's that's gone down in the books as one of the most violent shows I've ever seen. Like, even during Cold Hot Truth set, like, there were three ambulances called. Like, oh, so many people. Yeah, there were three ambulances called during Cold Hot Truth set, like, and after that, like the guys, the guys just turned around. Like after we finished the set, the guys just turned around and said, "You're in the fucking band, whether you like it or not. You're in the fucking band." And we're like, <laughs> "All right, sick." <laughs> like, it's, it's not every, it's not every day that you get to join one of your favorite bands. Yeah, because I remember you inviting me out. There was um, I think it, it was a show at the Unicorn in London. I think it was like Tim's first show back since he got released. That's from right. Prison. Yeah, because um, because yeah, because at that time uh, Tim was in an open nick. And uh, he um, like he's which meant like he was allowed like a day, one day a month off. And uh, it just so happened that his day off coincided with uh, Ruction Records, one of Ruction Records shows. So, you know, <laughs> it's a no brainer, isn't it? <laughs> I, re- I remember going to that show and I think that was the show where they filmed that Punisher music video. And yes. I don't even think the That's video right. can justify how fucking no. crazy that show went. I've never seen no. the unicorn just trashed and, and just yeah. fucking, it was a war zone. It was a, it was a it war was. zone. War zone. War zone's a fucking understatement as well. Like it was, it was just carnage. Like it, even carnage is a fucking understatement. Like it was just crazy. Like, you know, again, you know, I've, I'm I'm sitting behind the drums. I've got the best seat in the fucking house. Like, I'm literally, and the cool thing for me as well, like, I knew by that time, I knew the song so fucking well that I could literally just sit back on autopilot and like just let my body play where I'm just, I can just spectate while I'm on autopilot playing. And mate, <laughs> it was special. It really was. Yeah, it was yeah. special. They, they, even even like even around, being man. on stage with Tim for the first time for me, because obviously uh, Andy from True Valiance, was filling in for Tim while he was away. But even being on the stage with Tim for the first time didn't phase me at all. Like if, if anything, like, like the energy that Tim was getting from the crowd and like just the end, just the, 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 ta- the whole, it was so, the whole thing was just fucking tangible, man. Like it's ridiculous. Like yeah. the Tim, energy, the vibes that everyone was like giving Frank. backwards and forwards from each other. For anyone who doesn't know, like if you ever see Tim in person, he's just this big, what, six foot four, six five, big, intimidating motherfucker, you know, built like a brick shit house. But he's a, he's kind of a sweetheart at times, though. Built, built like a brick shit house, he's a fucking black belt in Muay Thai as well. At least I think he is. But um, yeah, but he's he is an he is a nice he is a nice bloke. To be fair, you know, like when when you when you get to know him, you know, he's he's actually one of the nicest people you meet. Yeah. He's just he's just really scary. At least then but what I, happened was you, you sort of stuck around for the um, the recording of, a, I guess you could call it a, sort of a comeback album of sorts, a Truth Getter. And that's an yeah. album I still end up listening to even today because it's it's like the hey, perfect too, combina- man. it's like the perfect combination of really meaty, very metallic, almost death metal riffs, chugs, beatdowns, yeah. an interesting amount of variety for a very fucking tough sounding uh, group. Well, 
Well, I tell you what, like truth, like even to this day, Truth Gator is still like one of my favourite albums, and not not just because not just because I helped write it and I and I recorded the drums on it, but it just just for what it is, like it's just an angry fucking record. <laughs> And as, as you say, you know, it's got elements of death metal, it's got elements of thrash, it's got elements of beatdown, it's got elements of hardcore. Like it's, it's, just got every, it's just got everything that I love about heavy music. And, you know, like when, um, when, 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 Tim, when Tim came out and um, he says to me, like, right, Ian, we need to fucking, we need to get this album done. And I says to him, like, right, the best, the best way to do it is to fucking get yourself a laptop, get yourself a copy of Cubase, Get yourself an, an audio interface, and then like, right, and then I'll, I will t- I will teach you how to use them, and I'll teach you how to program drums, and like, yeah, we'll we'll fucking we'll get it done, because um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, the the first the first singles that were really the first single that was released prior to Truth Gator C four twenty six, that was uh, written by me and Tim in Tim's mum's front room. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah yeah because um basically he had um he had a day out from the nick so i traveled up to his mum's house in boston to um with with my laptop and uh, my um my guitar processor and we wrote c426 in the day because tim had all the ideas in his head like he had all the riffs like how he wanted to structure the song literally all i did was track it and program the drums that was, that was all I needed to do because like Tim like knew straight away what he wanted to do and how to do it. And eventually I try every now and again, I chime in and say, well, do you know what Tim actually, it would sound better if you did it like this. So I produced, so C426, so I kind of produced it in a way, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, like I said, that, that, that song was, that song was written and recorded in his mum's front room. <laughs> <laughs> and i remember um I remember there was a bit of a i know there was kind of like a real sort of hype or buzz around the album's release especially in within those sort of hardcore circles and especially in the uk um but the yeah. release of the album was i remember you saying it was kind of it was delayed because well the bassist joe was in a near fatal accident fucking hell like I still, I still like it. It, it, make, it still makes my spine tingle, honestly. Like, I remember, like, I went, I went to work, and uh, Mauricio, who's the, who's our our new guitar player at the time, uh, Mauricio, like, he called me up when I was at, when I was at work and was like, "Dude, like, do you know? Have you heard what happened to Joe?" I was like, "What do you mean?" Oh, he had a fucking, he's had some kind of accident. Uh, I need, I need to call Tim. I don't know, I don't know exactly what's going on, but it don't sound good. So I'm just like, well. Um, well, I, obviously I can't fucking, I don't know what's going on, so I can't call him, you know, so I, I continue about my day and then, uh, I'm out, I'm out with, I'm out at dinner with, uh, with my missus and then Tim rings me and, uh, basically breaks it down for me. And, uh, honestly, like I wanted to fucking, I wanted the ground to open and swallow me whole, man. Like, I honestly, I honestly thought that was it. Like the, the extent of his injuries and what happened, I was like, mate, he's got days if not hours that's severe like, it, was, it was crushing man like honestly it was fucking crushing and then from there and uh, any anybody that's been anybody that follows cold hard truth will, will know joe's recovery story and like anybody that listens to the um everyone but us podcast which is done by waymer and gino and um steve from uh beat down fury uh, Wet Waymer from Knuckle Dust and uh, Gino from Iron Doubt. Sorry, I forgot, forgot to mention that. Yeah, the Everyone But Us co- podcast. They've done uh, an episode with Joe where Joe pretty much goes into detail about the accident and uh, his recovery. Like, it's, I, I sincerely recommend you go check that episode out. Mm-hmm. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on Apple Music. I'm pretty sure it's on, on, every, uh, on every platform. So I strongly, I strongly suggest you go and check that out if you haven't already. Um, at, least, at least as a yeah. cautionary tale to appreciate life, especially. Yeah, fucking hell. I tell you what, Joe, Joe Maduri should be a fucking inspiration to us all. Like he is the he is the 
epitome of like when you're when you've reached rock bottom you're you're an, you're you're literally an inch away from death and you just turn it around like that mm-hmm. and that that gig that gig we done in Sheffield where um he got on stage in a fucking wheelchair he got oh, yeah. on stage in his fucking wheelchair and played with us like that was special that that was something special <laughs> And then just like, because um, even even after leaving Cold Hard Truth, like me, me and Joe are still like we still keep in contact. Um, his, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> his missus and my missus are friends as well, which is great. You know, like obviously because of the lockdown, like we haven't seen each other for a long time, but we still keep in contact. But um, like seeing seeing him now, and like obviously you can tell you can tell he's royally fucked up, but at the same time, you know, he's he's not let it get in the way of living his life. And you know, I I respect him so much for that. I suppose that's sort of a, that kind of drive just to sort of keep going. Um, I'm going to turn this around yeah. on you though. Like, what's what's kept you? What's driven you just to keep sort of going at this? Um, you know, this this sort of I don't want to call it chasing the dragon of music, but um, in many <laughs> ways, in many ways, it sort of is. <laughs> I just like doing it, man. That's 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 literally all it is. You know, like when the when I was growing up, you know, I didn't really have a calling of sorts. If uh, I'm not sure if that's the right word for it, but I wasn't really good at anything while I was growing up. Bullshit. Or rather, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was, um, I was an athlete. So I was, um, I was doing, I was doing karate, but um, I was never made to feel like I was. That I got, I had, a, I had really, I had really big problems with bullying in school. You know, like uh, to the point when. You know, like, say, for example, you win a race and everybody pats you on the back and says, yeah, well done, you won the gold medal. Nope. I'd get the shit kicked out of me and be like, how the fuck dare you, you fucking beat my mate. No, I'd get I'd get a fucking punch in the face instead of a slap in the back for winning a race in uh, in school or winning anything or getting any kind of honours. You know, if I won the fucking, if I won the science fair, I'd get called a fucking nerd. I'm sure we anyone that's won a science fair probably has. So, you know, yeah, you can relate yeah. to that. It's like but classic stereotype every, every, almost. Yeah, exactly. But but every everything I did, like just was met with hostility rather than like grat with rather than reverence. So I never really felt that I was good at anything until um I started doing I started playing music. And then people would suddenly say, Oh yeah, you're you're really good at playing guitar, you're really good at playing bass, you're really good at this. And I was like, fucking hell, no one's ever said that to me. Like this is the god honest truth, you know. Like that no, no one had ever said anything like that to me before, and uh, that's that's kind of what it is. You know, even to this day, like when I'm like, thir- like I'm in my thirties now, and to still have people say to me that I'm a I'm a I'm I'm good at drums or I'm good at this that and the other, like it makes me feel really, it, it makes me feel special. Thank you guys. <laughs> it does. It's... It really does. It it means it means the world to me. It really means the world to me, and it's not like a fucking like uh what's 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 the word i'm looking for you know like you're seeking the, the 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 approval of people just to make yourself feel better Nar- narcissism you know it's, it's nothing to do with that at all no it's uh, it's something i enjoy doing and i i like people saying that um they enjoy what i do like they enjoy watching me play or like some music that i've written like inspires them to to do something like that, that that's that's awesome you know that's that's awesome and at the very least um, it takes away the um you know the harshness of the of the hustle as well. Yes, it, it does. It makes it, somewhat it makes worth it, it. Yeah, it makes it all feel worth it as well. And uh, I'm sure every everybody, like whether you're a, an athlete or uh, and anyone that's involved in the arts or sports, any kind of creative, uh, any kind of creative business, uh, for lack of a better word. So I'm on my fucking, I'm on my sixth can, so I'm starting to slur already. <laughs> um, but yeah, anybody that's, in, you, get pe- you get people saying that, uh, oh yeah, I don't give a fuck what people think, like you do. Deep down you do. Mm. Now that, now it kind of makes me wonder now, because that's kind of like, it's sort of a sign of a, almost feels like almost a bygone era. I mean, it's been 
over a year now since the last show or something I've been to, but it feels like fucking longer now. I mean, what do you... <laughs> I know you can't make a prediction, but with COVID-19 and the future of music, I mean, it's, it's essentially got shafted by the lockdowns. I mean, I mean, what's your prediction? I mean, I don't personally don't see shows returning this year, at least not like summer festivals and that. I hope I'm no, wrong. No, but... I mean, uh, I, re- I sincerely hope that we're both wrong, but I don't see shows returning until, tw- until next year, at the very earliest, mm. you know, because I mean, like, I don't want to. I don't want to get political, but fucking our government is so fucking useless with this whole thing. Yeah, like they just, they just, con- they just, just seem constantly fucking saying something and then saying something else and then backtracking and I don't know, man. I don't know, but you know, like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to get into politics because you know, no. that's that's not me. No, you know, no and, uh, I'm sure uh, every everybody else that's watching this has had enough of fucking politics. So, they, have, uh, they have and it's taking too long and people are restless and um you know by the time yeah. this is all over you're probably going to get like a huge wave of over enthusiastic bands just come out in full force and yeah, everybody be happy will, for it of, co- of course you will and everybody will be happy for it and why the fuck not but um i'm not i'm not saying that covid doesn't exist because i've had it myself and it is horrific it is really fucking bad it's like oh shit it's not but <clears throat> It's not the most ill I've ever been, but it's up there. Like it really was. I was bed bound for three days. Oh shit! But, yeah, it's, it's fucking horrible, man. But like the worst thing was, like I had it bad, but my missus had it worse. Like okay. I didn't have any, I didn't have any of the breathing problems, but she did, and she was pregnant as well. So it was, it was, it was scary, man. It was really fucking scary. Yeah, it seems it's weird. It seems to affect people differently, but um, yeah. It's it's not what you call entirely consistent person to person. So no, the whole no. It's, it's it's like anything, you know. Like you can have somebody that's got fucking man flu, <laughs> and some some people can like suffer horrendously with it. Like for me, when when I when I have a cold, you know, I just yeah, I feel like shit, but I can just get on with it. Other people they can't, and you know that's that's fine. That's 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 how it is. But really with um with covid you know in like this this is just this is just my opinion you know take what you want take what you want with it but um i think it's become more it's become more political than it has yeah. become more of a like a, a like a matter of science yeah yeah and the, you know, like, this mantra uh, I, of like carry on yeah like uh, well yeah this whole mantra of like you know, stay, stay at home stay away from people and um I'm not denying that there's because uh, viruses mutate. It's what they do, you know. I'm not denying that there's um, new new variants coming along because it was going to happen. It's going to happen yeah. eventually. I mean, coronavirus has been around for centuries, and uh, COVID is a, a variant of coronavirus, which is what SARS was back in the fucking uh, the two the the two thousands, which yeah. killed a whole bunch of people as well. So you know, it's just a mutated coronavirus, <sighs> and uh, I'm not denying I'm I'm not denying that there is um, other variants. No. But anyway, coming back to coming back to the subjects, but yeah. um, I don't I don't see I don't see shows starting up anytime soon. But at the same time, I do have to I do have to acknowledge the fact that music fans in general, like it doesn't matter if you listen to hardcore, you listen to like rap music, you listen to whatever you like, you listen to Enya. I fucking love Enya, <laughs> by the way. Everybody's fucking. Everybody is optimistic about the future. Everyone's just saying like, okay, we're we're holding out for this. We want this, mm. and that's like music listeners, bands and artists as well. And the fact that some bands and artists, you know, are still have still been able to hustle through this time, you know, still get their music out. You know, even bands are, like they're live streaming like gigs from like a, a, a set location. You know, that's that's yeah. fucking. I I wish I could do that. You know. Because you know, I don't live anywhere near the the other guys from Pine Glass, so I I wish we could do that. That would be fucking awesome. And you know, full respect to any of the bands that have been able to do that. There's um, you know that you know that guys that hate five six. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, do you know that band Tala? Yeah, I've come across the name. Don't know too yeah, much the, about it. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, new this new metal band, like fucking like he done oh. uh, he done a video. Yes, I remember I've, I've you've swear. played them to me. You've you've shown them to me. Yeah, they I, I remember thinking new metal's having a bit of a resurgence here. Do 
It is having a bit of resurgence, and uh, in my opinion, I welcome it. You know, I grew up on that music, so I fucking love it. But yeah, um, yeah like Hate Hate Five Six done um, a video of uh, Tala playing their new album in its entirety live, and like that's that's just that's just an example of like how how bands are using like they're they're getting the best out of a bad situation. Yeah, and yeah. Again, coming coming back to what I was saying earlier with um, the Pint Glass fans, like jumping in and like, like buying merch off us and like just, like fucking the obscene amount of streams we've had mm. like just and like, i'm i'm sure that like, we're not the only bands that i like, have had a, an upsurge in streams and and whatnot since lockdown i i hope we're not i hope everybody's um making the best out of a bad situation about a bad situation but you know like the fact that this 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 coming together of, of bands and uh and and listeners you know, this it's really it, it really is special. It just it just goes to show, you know, like whatever's going on, you know, this ain't gonna break us. No. Yeah, it's shit right now and it's not gonna get better anytime soon, but it will eventually. And when it does, you know, we'll pick up where we left off, or even, you know, there might be some sort of evolution from it. It's it's a shit time, but it's kind of an exciting time as well. Like like the um the way that people are adapting to the situation just to get their point across. Like get their art across is fucking spectacular, you know. Like I, whether I like it or not, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. There's a load of stuff that I don't like personally, but at the same time, it, you're doing your thing, you're hustling. I respect you, you know. More power to you. Just keep at it. Don't lose faith. You know, it's it's depressing seeing bands like seeing bands breaking up because of the pandemic, and yeah. I understand, you know, I get it. Like sometimes the circumstances don't allow you to do it i understand but you know that's life it is hopefully there's going to be more unity out of this than division i certainly hope so i certainly hope so i certainly hope so like i'm it got to the like the reason like one of the reasons why i left cold hard truth in the first place was like it was the whole thing just became sort of like a, a grind like it was just like like there wasn't any sort of yeah. um well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it was the band. Like it was just me. Like I'd lost, I just lost my passion. Like, I'd lost my way. I'd lost my soul. And you know, like every every show was the same. You know, like we'd driven to fucking somewhere in the UK, somewhere in Germany, and uh, you know, every everything was just being the same. Like there was no fucking. I didn't have the same excitement that I had in the early days when like, I see people kicking off and like going crazy, and like, but it kind of felt like again roast me in the comments it kind of felt like it was be everything was being done for the sake of being done you know the band was there for the sake of being there the fans were there for the sake of being there that's how it that's how it felt to me it it bit, just, yeah it sounds a bit like personal burnout as well yeah that's 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 exactly what it was you know i'm not i'm not i'm not pointing the finger at the guys in the band i'm not pointing the finger at the people at the shows i is literally it was me you know that's that's just how I felt you know I just I just wasn't enjoying myself anymore and uh, you know my my dad always said to me you know if you don't if 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 you don't like doing something then there's no point in doing it mm. and you know like even even my missus would say like I'd, I'd go out, I'd go out on tour <clears throat> <coughs> fucking hell <Whoa. laughs> those are my lamb chops <laughs> but, um, yeah I'd go out on tour and then I come home and I will just be so fucking depressed. And my missus has said to me, like, why the fuck are you doing this to yourself? And I was like, uh, you know, it's just what I do, isn't it? Yeah, but I guess eventually it, you can only ever sit out sort of old passions for so long before you start to miss it. I mean, that was me with videos as well. Like I yeah, decided to take a couple absolutely. of years off and. And then I suppose what, what changed was COVID and people like us, regardless of the situation, can't sit this one out. No, you, can, you cannot fucking, you, well, it's not even just COVID, you know, like um, my, for example, my neighbor upstairs, she's like fucking 80 something. And uh, her husband passed away um, earlier this year. And uh, even she says herself and like, you know, it, we've, we've all lost grandparents and um, our widow or widower, would you know they try and keep themselves busy you have to you know you can't sit at home doing nothing the whole time you know you got to fucking well even if it's something simple is like you know 
writing poems or fucking doing the crossword or the Sudoku or fucking anything like that. <laughs> it's just, just literally just, just something as simple as that. Yeah. Anything like re- redecorating your son's bedroom, like just anything like, you know, we, we, we got to keep ourselves busy. Yeah. I mean, it, at the very least, just to stay sane and kind of mitigate the effects of cabin fever before the walls start talking to you. Oh, mate. I know about the walls talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> different, uh, di- different subject altogether. But yeah, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> uh, I remember doing fucking. I remember doing acid at a fucking party, and <laughs> I, was fucking, <laughs> I was. I got into a fight with uh, my mate's couch. <laughs> <laughs> I got into a fight with my mate's couch because I thought he was trying to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, that's not uh, terrifying. <laughs> it was, uh, well, yeah, it probably was. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I was going to wrap this up by just asking a question. We'll have a bit of an after chat afterwards, but um, I was just yeah, going to just gonna ask, basically, um, I mean, what advice would you have for sort of other musicians or anyone who was looking just to get into the biz um, or just any general sort of advice you could give to anyone, given all the experiences you've had? It sounds really fucking cliche, but stay true to yourself. Like whatever, whatever reason that you started doing, whatever it is you started doing, just stick with that, you know? Yeah. Like the idea of money and fame and whatever you know, is, is very appealing. You know, fucking, when I, when, uh, when we started making money and uh, it was, it was great. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, that's the kind of shit that makes you lose your way. And that's the most important thing is, Try, it's easier said than done but try not to lose your way yeah. and and don't get into something for the wrong reasons because you know there's uh, I'm again I'm not going to mention any names but there are bands that I've seen come and go over the over the years that have just got in it for the hype you know they've seen fucking videos of desolated on YouTube and uh, think to themselves oh yeah I want to do that and then they they start doing it realize that actually this takes a lot of hard work I can't be bothered. I'm not going to do it anymore. And they last like a year, two years max. And then uh, mm. that's it. They're gone and forgotten. Don't be that guy. You know, don't be that guy. If you really, if you really want to do something, you got to believe in it. And that will show, you know, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to be fucking amazing in the beginning. Nobody is, but it will show as you get better at your craft, you know, and that apply that applies if anything, being a musician, being a fucking carpenter, being a builder, being a fucking artist it doesn't matter you know if you have that de- if you have dedication and a love for your craft and you're willing to put the hours in to make yourself better and make yourself you know accessible to people as well you've got to be accessible to people you can't be just like a oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do this but because i consider myself above you like don't be that guy man don't be that guy you know you got to be you got to have you got to have your arms open to everybody and everything you know I think that's pretty sound advice. Yeah, I could definitely yeah. uh, back that up. Yeah, seriously, pa- passion. That's that's what it's all about. You got to have the passion for what you do. You can't you can't get into it thinking that you're going to make it. You can't get into it for a quick buck because it's never going to happen. People well, people see through that straight away. It is it is, and to be honest, like I prefer more positivity than negativity, especially with a scene yeah. that's going to come back. And I think it's going to come back in a big way for sure. It's going to come back. It's going to come back stronger than it was be- before COVID. I guarantee you. Cause no, there's, um, and, and the great thing is like, there's, there's a lot of people out there that I've seen who've done like, for example, and um, the guys, um, I don't know if you're familiar with ready. Eye collective. No, no, I'm not. Okay. So they're, um, they're, they're a bunch, they're a bunch of guys from London that um, put on, put on shows in London and um, they start again, you know, they started off small and uh, you know, they've, they put on a really successful fest last year and um, not last year, sorry, 2019. And um, they actually put on the cold, hard truth 10 year anniversary. And that's got to be one of the most best organized shows that I've ever played. Like it ran to the minute. Like it was, it ran like clockwork. Like the, the guys really did a fucking good job. But obviously with uh, COVID and uh, people not being able to do much, 
you know they're they're these these guys like live and breathe hardcore music and they've um been spending the last time like actually going back in history like the history of like uk hardcore and like just showing like flyers from gigs like from back in the 90s and the 2000s oh, wow show, show shows that we've been to and fucking forgotten about like he put um he put a show up um they put a show up the other day with fucking gutworm and trc and i was like oh, fucking i remember that oh nice jesus christ nice. Yeah, like like even like bands that you for like Gutworm, you know, like who remembers Gutworm? Oh man, no, oh, that's that's who remembers, really like if if you yeah. if you remember Gutworm, put it in the comments. I fuck it, <laughs> I used to love Gutworm back in the day, but yeah, just and, and yeah, they're they're doing shit like that. They're like sort of giving everybody a history lesson in hardcore, and like for me, that's that's incredible, you know, because there's a lot of people that got into hardcore over the last five years, but don't necessarily know like the roots. And for, for them to, to go and do that, like that's that's fantastic. You know, it, it benefits everybody, you know, like people like the older heads remember stuff, the newer heads know where it all came from, you know. It's just like I said, man, stuff stuff like that. And anything as you say, like I'd rather positivity over negativity. Ne- ne- negativity. I think that's the biggest takeaway from all this. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks again for taking the time to do this. Ian, it was good fucking chat. Hey man, again. thank thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's been yeah. uh, been good, it's been good to talk about and i tell you what talking about the positive and negative stuff you know i could have said a lot of bad things tonight but i chose not to there's no point nobody wants to fucking listen to that shit i don't want to listen to that shit so no yeah, i don't think I anybody put... does either to be honest nah, and we'll get man. roasted less for it anyway <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um like i said pint glass have a new album coming out later on in the year and uh yeah in the meantime yep yeah, follow us on uh, follow us on facebook follow us on instagram Everything's on Spotify. So, and yeah, and thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's that's been supporting us through the whole thing. But obviously, you know, there's other bands out there too that need it. So, you know, jump on them, listen to that, like stream their music, buy their records, buy their merch, fucking just try and help each other out as much as we can, you know, because by, by, when we come back, it's going to be fucking hot. I can't wait. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking wait. It's gonna Neither be can I. I'm looking forward to it yeah. too well. All right. All the best, mate. Catch you in a bit. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs>